up. Give that extra effort. What time is it? Game time! We're going to take our friends and fans on a trip into Dreamland. Magic and Michael. Jordan. Jordan. This is a matchup that everybody wanted. Jordan for three. And a Jordan by the other three. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't believe it. This place is pandemonium. He is hot. Woo! See, this is what Michael lived for. He wanted this challenge. Think he could just sit back and, and say ah and wow. The Chicago Bulls have won the NBA championship for the second straight season. The Bulls try to become only the third team in NBA history to pull off a three P. Here comes Jordan. Jordan to Rob Marley. Good Marley. He's got Michael. He's going to try to take over now. He's got it. Seconds to go on the shot clock, 15 in the ballgame. Michael will take it. He's fouled. He's gone. Superman back in the building. 55 for MJ. I never said we had to stop him. Oh, we can't stop focus him. On Nobody him. can stop him. 43 seconds to go on the game. They were down by 20. Here's Jordan extending. Michael Jordan driving the lane. The Bulls win the championship. For the third year, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls have climbed the Mount Olympus of the NBA. Michael Jordan, above and beyond. Michael Jordan's quest for a third consecutive championship had been his most grueling. After a summer of helping the Dream Team bring home a gold medal from Barcelona, he had no time to recover before launching into the 92-93 season to defend the Bulls' NBA crown. From outward appearances, though, he seen no worse for wear. Jordan fixed. Oh, spins the other oh, arm oh, by oh. MJ. Fakes the move on the baseline. Oh, and the left. Oh, oh. To Pippen, three on two to Jordan. And the foul. Oh, yes, it started. But while Michael continued to light up the nightly highlight reels, his success was not coming as easily as it seemed. No matter how great you are, you lose some of the edge each and every time that you do it. Well, we were going, going against the odds for the third time, uh, and we were losing something. I think mentally, we were battling against uh, something that we really couldn't see. If Michael was fighting something, he seemed to be winning. Leading the Bulls to the top of their division, he grabbed his seventh scoring title and reached a historic personal milestone. And yet, with each game, the joy of victory seemed to be less. During the course of that year, you could tell fatigue and, you know, a loss of attentiveness to the game sometimes wore out. The travel, the expectations, the ups, the downs of the course of a year. And I think that was what was taking a toll on him. Mystified by the loss of his usual zest for the game, Michael called on his closest advisor, the man who had been at his side for all of his past triumphs, his father James. My father came out and stayed with me for about a week. We really got deep into the conversation about possibly walking away from the game. But with the playoffs at hand, Jordan hoped he would be revitalized by the welcome pressure of the postseason. And the opponent who awaited him in the semifinals could not have been more promising. Well, for some reason, Cleveland's always been a place where I always have risen to excel. The inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win it! They win it! Now, four years later, Jordan would once more use Cleveland as his personal showcase. Oh, what a pass from Jordan! 
And with time running out in the series, clinching game, and the score tied, he would once again provide his trademark dramatics. Fasten your seatbelts. Here we go, folks. The season is on the line. Six, five, four. Michael Strip got it back. Three, two. Michael falls. Fires. Yeah. Oh, it again. The ball's wet. He looks at the crowd. At the buzzer. This crowd is stunned. Instead of leaving Michael with a feeling of elation, however, his latest heroics seemed only to highlight how much time to change. It wasn't quite the same because pretty much everyone expected it. You know, when you do something so often in a building, now it becomes an expectation of the fans and, and, and of yourself. In the Eastern Conference Finals, Jordan was again spectacular. Though the New York Knicks would claw their way to victories in the series' first two games, Jordan refused to let Chicago fall, personally turning the tide and leading them to victory in six games. There's Jordan on the plate. Yes! 52 points for Michael Jordan. Even as he tried to revel in finishing off his longtime rival, however, Jordan quickly found the burden of public scrutiny overshadowing his triumph. What Jordan does in his off time is consuming the Chicago media. And the New York media, and I suppose the national media. That's enough. I mean, that's, I mean, if, if my life comes to a point where it's scrutinized to what I do in my free time, then, you know, it's no need to even talk to you guys. They were, in essence, sneaking behind my back trying to find out every negative aspect in my life. I thought that was truly unfair and, and very distracting. With the Bulls on the verge of a third consecutive title. Welcome to the NBA Finals. In the case of the Chicago Bulls, it's welcome back. Michael put all distractions aside. Michael has been unreal. Setting a new final scoring record, averaging over 40 points a game, he seemed to have regained his old intensity. Keep your head. How you doing in the final? Let's go. Keep your head. Everybody get together. Michael Jordan now looks like he is going to drive every time he gets his hand on the ball until they stop it. Man, Michael Jordan shot the ball 43 times. Ahead to Jordan. Jordan on a breakaway, and there's a highlight reel as he jammed it in. Damn. Jordan, yes! Leading the Bulls past the Suns in six games, he would garner a third straight finals MVP. It's all over for Chicago Bulls three straight NBA championships. But even in his moment of triumph, Michael had again begun to ponder his future. After we won the championship, you know, I sat in on the floor and just reminisced about the whole season and the, and the years that I've had at the game of basketball and where my, my life was. And my conversations with my father in the past, I felt this could be a good opportunity you know, for me to step away and, um, and go do other things. So I enjoyed the moment for the moment, but in the back of my mind I knew that that was probably my last game. And no one really knew except for my father and myself. Get it, man. That's what, that's what bringing me into this world. After a summer sorting out his feelings, Michael began to seriously weigh the decision he had been struggling with for so long. I asked Phil Jackson, frankly, I said, what kind of challenges can you give me next year? He felt like if I don't have the desire to do it, if I don't have the thirst to play basketball, it's not as much fun as it used to be, then I'm going to lose my gift. We were crying and trying to come up with different types of challenges, and I couldn't come up with one. He couldn't come up with one for me. But as much pain as Michael felt coming to grips with his heart-wrenching decision, it would pale in comparison to the tragedy he was about to face. Last night, we began the show with the disappearance of Michael Jordan's father. Tonight, the worst fears have come true. James Jordan was found dead, the victim of an apparent murder. It was a very difficult moment for me, and um, somehow I just kept my head high, and I, I thought about all the things that he used to tell me, just turn a negative into a positive. And here I was dealing with him in that way. It was tough. Shaken by the death of his father, Michael knew that now there was no going back. His choice had been made for him, and soon the whole world would know about it. 
Before we continue tonight, a late-breaking story of enormous interest. Sources with the Chicago Bulls have confirmed that Michael Jordan will announce his retirement effective immediately. The greatest basketball player who's ever played the game has apparently hung it up for good. That's the news that's making headlines across the country this morning. Michael Jordan, the best player in the country's hottest sport, the most recognizable athlete in all the world, has apparently decided to call it quits at the age of 30. When I lose... Uh the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. Basketball lovers are letting Michelangelo walk away from the game while he's still an artist. And I never thought I'd come back to the game of basketball. I never thought I would have that, that feeling to come back to the game of basketball. With Michael's stunning decision, friends and admirers around the world voice their feelings of loss and tried to put his historic career in perspective. The only thing that disappoints me uh, is the fact that we had always planned on retiring together. If the league's gonna miss him, I'm gonna miss him, and I'm just glad I had the opportunity to play with him for one year. The world was jolted with the news of Jordan's retirement. In Romania, state TV aired a program in his honor, and Israeli radio carried his news conference live. Those who played against him are at a loss with the exit of basketball's headline act. Michael Jordan uh, put style in the game. Jordan's off to the right. Jordan on the drive. Falls down underneath. Oh, 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 oh. Jordan, the crowd anticipate. There's one player that's the perfect 10 that has it all. Look at the air. Look at the hang time. Look at the flying motion. Sometimes I would just stand there and just, you know, I know he's going to do something crazy, so I just stand there and watch. I've seen him do things that I can't even dream about though. I've seen him go up on one side of the lane, get bumped, still up in the air, twist the ball, do all this in the air, and lay it up on the other side. You can't do that. Jordan trying to shake off starts. Oh, what a move by Jordan! Jordan at his best. There's very few people on this planet that can do this. Going in and going to play against Mike and having Mike shooting a free throw with his eyes closed. I don't know what I will tell my kids. The front court. Left corner shot by Jordan. Yeah! Yeah! My favorite story, he was coming down. And I stepped up to take a charge and he took off, stuck his tongue out, and he obviously would have ran me over. And then all of a sudden, he switched his tongue to this side, and he changed in the middle of the air, I swear, and he just went by me, and he laid it with his right hand, and I was standing there watching him lay it. And then I looked over at Chuck, and Chuck was, you know, kind of PO'd. I said, don't even say it, you saw what happened. How does he do that? How does he do that? How does he know? It's one play really sticks out of my mind, I will never forget it. I, I have it on tape at home. We play New Jersey Nets. Michael get the ball, and Derek Coleman, Chris Dudley, and Chris Morris comes at him. He maneuvers inside, outside, around, back. I mean, it was unbelievable. And makes the shot. I mean, he's the, he's the greatest. Jordan suspended in air. That's beautiful. Breathtaking. Then yeah, Michael came down. Ooh, he went fake right, went left it all the way back and then just held him for me. Tongue all out. Now he's still hanging in there. He's still hanging. I'm sitting there saying, no, he is not going to do this. Not on us, not on me. Yes, he is. Floated, switched hand, and then kissed it with the English. So in there, you had them like that. See, you had them going crazy, pulling their hair out. People going home the next day, I mean, to the office and saying, man, you missed it, you missed it. Michael on the breakaway, showtime! As he skies into the air, it is 
Jordan throws it down. MJ, please, I'm begging. Let me get down on me. Wait a minute, get the camera. Get the camera down here. See, I'm on my knees. See, I'm on my knees, MJ. Look, I'm coming down low to the camera angle. I'm on my knees begging. Jordan, look at that! Back to Jordan. Please, Michael, come back. Michael Jordan with a miracle shot! Please come back, Michael. Please, please. While the sports world pondered basketball without Michael Jordan, Michael contemplated life without basketball. You know, now I can... And do do something that I choose to do and not what I have to do. And I started skiing and then I started being a little bit more adventurous, riding motorcycles and things that I, I never really uh, did, but I always wanted to experience at least once or twice. But when Michael was through experimenting, he settled on a pastime that had intrigued him since early childhood. Now wipe that smirk off your face. He's not kidding. Michael Jordan is going to give baseball a shot. Well, I mean, it was something that you know my father and I talked about way before he passed. Uh, me retiring for basketball and then playing baseball. And the final year that we won the championship was like his biggest push to go and do it. No one could present a challenge for me at the time other than what my father was presenting to me, which was to go and play baseball. Michael's journey to follow his father's advice took him to Birmingham, where he joined the Barons, the AA affiliate of the Chicago White Sox. Here, he began a radically different lifestyle. Well, now you, you're riding a bus. You know, for eight hours, you, know, you stop to a convenience store to grab a bag of potato chips, get back on the bus and travel another eight hours. It was a fun experience, and I grew great friendships. Go get him, I needed that that type of camaraderie that came along with the minor league players. <laughs> I think what baseball did for me was it gave me an opportunity to revisit all those moments that I had uh, with my father and, and with some of the situations that never occurred to me, I even thought about uh, going through the game of basketball. But as Michael struggled on the field, a bewildered public wondered why he had strayed so far from his pedestal. We have documented his every move, every swing, every miss. He thought I was just making a mockery of the game and not putting forth the effort. I was putting forth the effort. If you're not successful at it, doesn't mean that you failed. It was at least you tried. And the struggles themselves seemed to remind him of simpler times. Everything I was doing was elevator ride, you know, it was easy, things came easy. I forgot about the stairs, you know, the, the different levels of success to get to the top. When he goes back, when he starts to go back, you go back, okay? And so I kind of got, I, I revisited those steps uh, that I totally had forgotten from playing professional basketball and being on top for so long. But though he relished his time away, Michael could never fully detach himself from his former life, especially as he watched his team struggle in the playoffs against the scrappy New York Knicks. It's like a, you know, the bully of the neighborhood taking advantage of the kid brother when you know the big brother's not around. You had those feelings of, God, I know I can help that team. To beat the Chicago Bulls in a playoff series. It seemed no coincidence that Michael's thoughts began to wander just as he was finally finding some success at his new diversion. <laughs> Having fulfilled his promise to his father, Michael had achieved what he had set out to. I really wanted to give myself a chance to. To, to, to do that as a challenge, but then as an appreciation uh, to my father for, for, for him wanting me to do it. The designated hitter, Michael Jordan. And dramatically, it would all crystallize in one defining moment. It's a fly ball on a sheet of sail that's back in. It was a special moment, uh, knowing that my father was looking down on me at the same time. When I really thought about it, I said, who's here? 
You know, everything that he's taught me, everything that I accomplished was him. It took me a while to understand that. And you know, once I understood it, I could accept it and deal with it. I guess it made me at peace with myself. So it was a therapeutic experience for me. And I needed it. I, feel, I think if I wouldn't have done it, there's no way I would have been able to come back to the game of basketball. Or I would probably have had a tough time mentally dealing with a lot of things. With his newfound peace of mind, Michael set off to Chicago to play in Scottie Pippen's summer charity game, the last contest at the old Chicago Stadium. Can you still play this game, buddy? I don't know. I'm about to find out. Are you rusty? Oh. Yeah, probably. Michael quickly seemed at home as he scored 52 points and said goodbye to the arena that had seen so many of his sensational performances. You know, that, that building was, was my home for years. It, it helped me develop uh, my basketball skills. So when I, when I truly knelt down to, to kiss the floor, you know, it was like kissing a girlfriend goodbye. And, you know, I hate to see it go. But Michael's thoughts quickly turned from goodbyes to new challenges. I really started getting the attitude of, uh, of facing some of this young, young talent because I was playing with a lot of the young players, Jason Kidd and Anthony Hardaway. And that's when I started to get my feet wet a little, a little bit of possibly coming back and you know, just seeing what these guys got. Fans all over the world salute Michael Jordan. Ironically, just as Michael began to contemplate a possible return, his retirement celebration was being staged at the new United Center Arena. I, I, I never wanted to see that <laughs> or want to experience that feeling at all. I still felt I could play the game of basketball, and it was a great appreciation, I must admit, to have your jersey hung from the rafters. Very few people have that opportunity. Think about it, maybe you might want to, just for one more season, lace these bad boys up and play one more time. One more time. I think it felt like someone was closing a coffin for me in a sense. And uh, I didn't want to feel like that by no means I can come back and play the game that I truly love if I choose to come back. Though he did return to baseball, as the months wore on, it became clearer and clearer to Michael what he truly wanted to do. He calls him about 7 in the morning and says, you know, hey, let's, let's go to breakfast. So we go to breakfast, we talk a little bit. He's in a suit. Uh, so, you know, he said, let's go over to practice and, and screw around before practice. Said, All right, fine, you know, we'll do that. You know, no problem. Uh, so we're out there just shooting. He has his suit on still. I have my practice stuff on. So shooting, a shooting game goes into a shooting contest. And all of a sudden the contest goes into, well, let me see if you can still guard me. And then it goes from, well, let me see if you can still guard me. And then before you know it, we're playing on one-on-one. -on -one. While those close to Michael suspected what was on his mind, the rest of the NBA was busy battling into the last months of the season. And as the league readied for the postseason, it featured a very different look than when Michael had left a year and a half ago. The spotlight now belonged to the defending champion Houston Rockets and their young challengers, the Orlando Magic, while the Bulls struggled to stay above 500. But now, that was all about to change. There are reports circulating this morning that have a lot of sports fans ecstatic. Hold on, hold on. Hey, there goes Michael. There goes Michael. Michael Jordan has worked out with the Chicago Bulls three times this week, and as you can imagine, that news is creating a lot of excitement in Chicago. Woo! Michael, you have something to say today? I started attending a couple of practices, and um, Scottie Pippen started working on me, he and BJ, about how we still could have a chance of winning a championship if you were still playing. There's some major league selling going on here in the United Center, not just from fans, but from players alike. Everybody's confirming this, that it's a done deal. Michael's coming back, with the exception of Michael Jordan. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. He's doing all the drills we're doing. He's doing everything. So we begin to realize that there's a serious possibility that he's coming back, but we don't know. It's a reality, but it's still not a reality. So we're just not pinning any hope, so we're not trying to throw up a balloon or a kite that's not ready to fly. I could hear the noise generated from the media outside, and it wasn't... 15 people, it was 55 people, it was 100 people. I thought, this must be a great media event. I think just going through practice and getting out there with the guys and the enjoyment that came out of that really started to make me feel good. All the compliments that they were giving me started to 
doesn't sway me to the idea of coming back and playing. He's been out of the game for at least a year. He wants to come back, and this town is going nuts. Michael, please make my life complete. Come back. Michael Jordan announced today he's coming back to basketball. We will play for the Bulls tomorrow against the Indiana Pacers. One guy said the words, I'm back, and it set the world on fire. Just turned it upside down. <laughs> the economy has produced 6.1 million jobs since I became president. And if Michael Jordan goes back to the Bulls, it'll be 6,100,001 new jobs. Today, Michael Jordan at age 32 tries to accomplish what no one else truly has in team sports history. Michael Jordan has returned and he's wearing number 45. I knew my father would never see me playing another number and I felt it was a new beginning, so why not change it back to something that I had uh, played with when I first started in high school. No tap, run your basic, okay? If tap, run your center opposite. It was a very nervous experience for me because I never thought I would be playing again. Jordan's still looking for his first field goal. And there it is, Michael Jordan. It felt really good to be back out there on the basketball court and uh, with a different outlook about life and how I approach each and every day. I was making myself happy. I was happy being there only because I chose to do so. There's Jordan going left to beat Scott. What a pass from Jordan! Bulls trail by one. Michael, oh well, yeah! Welcome to the back. If Michael received a warm reception in Indianapolis, it was nothing compared to the frenzy his return inspired in Chicago. Jordan's back, right? Yes, he is! Yes! Yeah! yeah. Okay. MJ's back! No matter where you look around the world, you'd never find another city like this one to welcome someone back with such open arms. I'm so happy to have that guy back, huh? Well, I hope I am. It made me feel good to be back home because I felt like I'd been away like a kid going to college and then now he's back home to see all his familiar faces. Captain Pippen, hey, hi, this is Captain Grant, Captain Pippen. Oh, oh, Captain, oh. Captain Jordan, Captain Grant. Here comes Jordan. Yes! Fired away to Grant, blocked by Jordan. All the way inside, upstairs. Michael, don't get sucked back in there. They're always looking for a guy to fill that spot right there. Uh -oh. <laughs> Steel Jordan, look out! Oh, yeah! Here it is. They're on their feet. They love it. That's what they came to see. Michael did not leave the Chicago fans disappointed. But his most dramatic performance so far would come the next night in Atlanta. Hawks lead by one. 5.9 remaining. More than just enough time for Jordan to work his magic. The inbounds to Michael. Racing the clock. Jordan for the win. Yes! I did it again! He is now back! I love those moments that you can go in when it no one expects you to and save the team from losing the game. And he would stage yet another sensational performance in the next game under the bright spotlight of New York. Welcome to Madison Square Garden. There is a media-sized crush here, and there's only one reason why. It has been the hottest ticket in town. You know, it's like the Beatles have arrived on the scene. And they isolate Jordan against Potter. Look out! Michael Jordan off to the fast start, this time for the pull-up, and he is on fire. They're going to keep going to the well with Jordan and starts. Double team, Oakley gets there, two late. Oh! It's a three-pointer. Oh! For Michael Jordan! Jordan off the turnover. Puts the move on, starts, yes, and it counts. Michael Jordan! I could read Starks every move. You know, I basically had him at my disposal. That is a high for the NBA this season. You got to start the other night against Atlanta. 
and uh, you, know, you just sort of build it up to New York. <laughs> Michael plays really for one reason, and he loves to play, and he loves the hype. You know, he loves the challenge. Baseline, Michael comes inside, hangs it oh. With Michael electrifying fans across the country. Oh, yes, they're on their feet. The hype was back in full swing. Gave my beloved Knicks a double nickel. Life is a sport. Drink it up. That's what I figured. And from his endorsements to his charity work with children, Michael was drinking it up like never before. It's a big Bulls fever. Uh, he better be in Chicago. Oh, yeah. yes. You watch a lot of the Bulls games? I watch all of them. Man, that's good, man. Liquor fan in Chicago? <laughs> Just don't rub my head. <laughs> Block. 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 Oh, man. There we go. Yeah. Whenever you guys get down or have a bad day, just think about today. We had a fun time, you know, and uh, all of us have bad days, even me. But it's fun to come out and have a good time with you guys. As the season drew to a close, Michael continued to have a good time leading the Bulls to a 13-4 finish and establishing them as the hottest team in the East. So as they prepared to face Charlotte in the first round of the playoffs, they could not have been more confident. We felt good about our chances at that time. We had a person who could close the game out, and we, we knew that we could get on a roll and win 15 games. And that confidence proved to be well found. Michael Jordan scored 48 points. Michael was the man, as everybody expected him to be. The game is over! The Bulls move on to round two! The ultimate top is to win a championship game. That's when you really know that you're back at the top. The Orlando Magic, owners of the best record in the East, posed a stern test of Michael's resolve. If he hoped to reestablish his Bulls as title favorites, Michael knew that now was the time. Oh, here's Cook. But from the series' first game, the Magic showed that it wouldn't be easy. The Bulls want to run. Here's Pippen for Jordan. Yes, and it counts. 91-90 the score. Chicago with the lead with 18 and 1 10 seconds to play. Don't leave them wide open for a layoff. We gotta challenge everything now for what's it on the floor. With the game on the line, there was no question who the Bulls would look to. I tell you, I want the ball in Michael's hand. That's what being a great player is all about. You want the ball in that guy's hands when the game's on the line. Yeah, I've always been known as a player who could finish off a team. And, and you always want to be in control in those moments. All right, here we go. Now Jordan played by Anderson. Here I was in those moments that you, know, you take pride in being put in, and yet I let the team down. Well, if you think it should have been secure in the hands of anybody, it should have been in the hands of Michael Jordan. He just got caught making a mistake. The unthinkable had happened, but Michael would have another chance to pull off his expected heroics. Jordan played by Royal. Well, anytime you have Michael Jordan with the ball, you got to think that, you know, hey, they're going to seal the game right here. My skill level was not quite the same, what people expected to see. So I was very disappointed. I felt that that loss was probably one of the worst moments he's ever experienced in his uh, basketball days. Hoping to shake off his disappointment, Michael reached into his past for comfort and hopefully a change of fortune. Is he better in 23? I think he is. Uh, we all know that he's better in 23. He knows it. But Michael's unique ability to raise his game on command remained only a memory. 
Boy, Michael's missed a lot of close-in shots and he's trying to take another the shot around the basket. Michael is not able to finish that shot. That used to be his bread and butter. I think people made their own opinions about, well, maybe he's lost his step. Maybe he's not the same player. Jordan lost it. Another turnover for Michael Jordan, who has had his difficulty. All of a sudden, he physically didn't have the, the presence at that particular time to do what he needed to do, and he wanted to get it done so badly. And as the magic eliminated the Bulls in six games, Michael had to wonder if he would ever fully regain his past brilliance. Give him credit, he's probably still the greatest player in the game overall. Uh, he just, uh, he, he wasn't his, his, his old self. Yeah, I had doubts that maybe I can't play the same type of game that I used to play because I wasn't able to do it on call. So in, in sitting in that locker room, very disappointed, I made a promise to myself that come next year, I'm gonna be ready for this game. I started a month earlier than I've ever started, and I wanted to get back and enjoy the game. I just wanted to play it. I felt I had to do that again. I had to put forth the work on the basketball court. Though he was shooting a movie in LA, Jordan had a special facility constructed for his workouts, and it was appropriately dubbed the Jordan Dome. So this is basically built for him so he can play basketball, he can work out. I go over and do, do my work over there, come over here for lunch, lift, go back, finish my uh, my work over there, and come back and play in the afternoons. And so we would invite anybody in, in LA who wanted to play or who played professional basketball to come out and play. He invited me after coming up and playing. I walked in and said, this is perfect because you got all the weights on one side and you've got the court in the middle, which is great. All of them would come uh, into L.A. to do a show or film a show or do some type of promotion. And they would come out and play with me every night. Alonzo Mourning's been up here, Patrick Ewing's been up here, Shaquille O'Neal's been up here. I mean, what better place to play summer pickup basketball? Hosting a daily wave of challengers, Michael felt his skills steadily returning. Well, it was a great pickup game, and the confidence came along with it, you know, making a game winning shot. I could see a little gap in, in between defenses that mentally I knew I could get to. Not physically, I could, I could get to. These are the things that started to come back to me. Arriving in Chicago for the start of the 95-96 season, Michael was greeted by a slightly revamped bull team. But he still seemed more than ready to lead them on a new quest to regain their championship stature. Each day is a building block to a certain uh, goal that we're, we're striving to achieve. And even from the start of the preseason, Michael served notice that all his preparation had paid off. You know, I thought, you know, by the end of training camp, he was right back where he's always been. Can't do it any better than that. And as Michael soared into the regular season, he lifted his teammates with him. With authority. Oh, you thought it was going to be a layup, did you? Wham! In your face. Quickly establishing the Bulls as the league's hottest team. Michael Jordan! With Michael, you know you're going to win. And, and he instills a confidence in everyone. He makes everyone around him better. Michael, beautiful feed. What a shit for the two handed jam on the outside. Erasing any doubts that he would reassert his dominance, Michael tortured opponents with a barrage of bad memories. Yes, sir. He was, he was in his own little zone today, and uh, it was good. Jordan driving. Beautiful move. Oh. oh. Whoa, Witherspoon and goes to the hole for two. So the Bulls maintain possession. Here is Jordan. Michael tonight is showing the entire repertoire. You just know if things aren't going well, there's going to be a chance that Michael's going to come away and do something to put us right back in it. I remember back a game in uh, it was Vancouver. We should have lost the game. Uh, we were down 12 points with six minutes to go. Michael just said, well, that's enough. I can't let this happen. And All alone, thinking about the shot, thinking about driving. Now drives down to the right side, goes up to the left hand. It's good. Oh, He's I incredible. Like 12 straight by George. 12 straight. The game was over. He scored 19 points in six minutes. It's unbelievable. Now the inbounds pass is stolen of all people by Michael Jordan and he goes up for the jam. He's just an incredible player. With Michael energizing them, the Bulls continue to pile up victories. And suddenly they were not only chasing a championship, they were pursuing history as well.
Jordan's team taking aim at 70, which is truly a Herculean feat never accomplished in NBA history. Every night, you face with a, a playoff atmosphere. You know, the arena's sold out, and you're going to get the best basketball from that team, even if they've been playing bad. Right now. Right now. No call. Jordan to Dennis Rodman, Harper to Pickle. Oh, beautiful! Showtime, Lakers, you saw it here. With Michael leading the way, the Bulls brushed aside opponents almost at will. 105, 104. The bonus. Stripped by Jordan. Break away. Oh. They just broke the clock. They scored here, Jim. They go up five. Oh, man. Oh, my God. What a play. We have seen this man do some incredible things. But have you ever seen him do anything better than that? Ahead the Jordan Bulls have numbers. Just got it. Yeah. The other. They won all the big games against the good teams and uh, and been consistent enough to beat the other teams. And Lenny himself in the pregame show mentioned the chemistry problem the Hawks have had. Jordan to Harper to oh. Pippen. Beautifully done. Unselfish teamwork. So the Bulls go to 35-3, and 12 straight wins. The Bulls prove again they're the best in the NBA and they're on a course to win the most games ever in a season by an NBA team. As Michael enjoyed one of the most successful comebacks in sports history, one of his closest friends and rivals chose to follow in his footsteps. The media is here, the fans are here, this place is rocking, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens between Magic and Michael. It was like a playoff game in the middle of the regular season with all the media hype and the expectations. And I picture with If the game can live up to any of the excitement before the game, we're in for a real treat. Anytime you get Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson on the court at the same time, you've got something special. I'm pretty sure for Magic, uh, knowing what he was experiencing and coming back, it was very similar to my own thoughts. Ball in low to the postman, Magic working on Rodman, comes around Rodman, hook shot, a six is good! A beautiful hook, curling it off his right wrist. And it was fun. I enjoyed it. We gave him a good test. Uh, I think I got fouled by Dennis, and he told Dennis, don't let up on him, beat him up some more. We got, we're going to get him in shape. And uh, I knew what he was doing. He was working on Dennis to work on me to get me in shape, and I, I appreciate that. Converse to that. And it was up 20. <laughs> As the Bulls completed the first half of the season, talk of a 70-win season was at an all-time high. But unlike in years past, Michael simply refused to let the pressure affect him. I'm more solid, I'm more mature, I'm more uh, understanding, not as edgy. I think that's a sign of maturity for me and a sign of uh, aging. Heading into the All-Star Weekend in San Antonio. Program! All-Star Program! Program! Michael was completely relaxed and ready to fully enjoy the festivities. But I had a whole different perspective about enjoying the whole weekend for myself and not for someone else. It was strictly my enjoyment to get to know the new guys, to have fun with them. It happened because y'all crazy. Y'all remind me when we crazy. Crazy, I did it. Hey, but you know I'm still going left, too. I'm still going left. I'm still going left. Even though I know what some of these guys are going through because I've experienced it. Y'all better learn how to play on the road. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And if I could help, I would give my voice to help you. But for the most part, just enjoy it. These Reggie's? Thanks for his elbow. Those are Reggie's. <laughs> yeah, I got years on him. They were Reggie's. They were Reggie's. I just wanted to fit in. I didn't want to stand above or stand below. I just wanted to fit in. Without a doubt, you know that. <laughs> so in that essence, this, this past All-Star Weekend was fun. I didn't care about what happened, if I won MVP, if I didn't. I just wanted to play well and enjoy the whole weekend. 45. That's a bad luck member, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't trying to dunk it. I wasn't trying to dunk it. I wasn't trying to dunk it. Thank you, my rookie. Thank you, my rookie.
I bet you first hit ball. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Let me check that. Check. Oh. Get out of here. <laughs> That's a lot about my personality. People don't know. I I, I like kidding around. Fast start on the comedy meter. I like joking around. Pulling every fans and, and I think just, I'm at that stage in my life that I want people to see that and understand that uh, about me. And uh, I want to enjoy those things and not have to enjoy them behind closed doors. Enjoy them in public. <laughs> I always get everybody like that. I got two bars like that. <laughs> so that they, they can have a better understanding for me. And, uh, and, and view me as a normal guy. Hey, I won't do that. So this this past uh, All Star game was was a good avenue, a good uh, stage for me to show that to people and to other players that I'm not above anyone else. I'm just amongst you guys, and I and I strive to be the best basketball player that I can be. Check, check, check. Oh, right there, dog. Right there, to you. And as happy as Michael was to be at All-Star, the fans were even happy to have him. Hey, my boy don't want to play to it. He hurt this boy. You hurt nature, uh-huh. I know it. Give me Shaq, Daddy. Shaq. Shaq. Watching the post. Hey! Come on, y'all know I'm 11 years old. I ain't gonna pass the ball. Come on now. Something about them Georgetown centers traveling all over the place. Hey, Pat, they didn't teach y'all how to not travel to Georgetown. Get back right here. Right there. Here is Richmond. Hey! It's Richmond not able to find the ring. Leaving San Antonio with a big smile and MVP honors in tow, Michael would hold on to the lighthearted spirit of the All-Star Weekend for the rest of the season. Playing with obvious joy, he seemed to have completely banished any of the doubts that had once plagued him. What drove me back to the game was I truly loved the game. I miss enjoyment that it gave me once I was in 94 feet arena. When Michael Jordan's tongue is out, something bad's gonna happen for the opposition. Is he having fun or what? I've never seen him smile so much out there on the court than I have uh, this year. Jordan with a spectacular move. Hardaway, the lead. Mike. Oh, what a play! 53 points, a season high. Standing ovation. He loves it. Big smile on his face. Michael's the kind of guy that'll work himself into a lather. You know, he'll be going out there harder and harder when things got more and more difficult. Now he's been able to settle back in and relax a lot more and just let the game come to him. He's having a little fun right now. In the old days, when I first got here in Chicago, I had to make it downtown in 30 minutes. You know, like I was in a rush to get somewhere. And now I'm mature enough to slow it down a little bit and enjoy it even greater. You know, the little things. Hey, no, bud. You know, I don't like to see you come in town, because that means we got a bad announcer. But I think that's what maturity has taken me now, to just take my time and enjoy every minute of it. What you see now is down to earth, but yet lighthearted. When the Chevy representative dropped by to talk with us about our blazer trip to Alaska, I bet he never dreamed he'd have so much fun. Michael, this first shot is of our rafting trip. Just free will it and, and do what I want to do. With Michael reveling in life on and off the court, his comeback could not have been more complete. He was once again at the top of his game. The Bulls were making a serious bid to be considered one of the greatest teams of all time. And if anything, his remarkable personal journey had only added luster to his legend and his legacy. The best player ever is still Michael Jordan. Uh, he, he, he's just the greatest. Creativity, thy name is Michael. 
just playing with him. It's uh, you know, it's, it's like you can say uh, you played baseball with Babe Ruth. I tell you, he's just simply amazing. If there was a basketball player uh, in, in Webster's dictionary, it didn't have to be a picture of Michael Jordan. I never thought I'd come back to the game of basketball. I didn't think I could do it without my father being around. But I think that was the beginning of, of my maturity. Uh, as, a, as a basketball player, as a person in life, and uh, as a man in, in terms of making a choice without my father physically there. It took me 18 months to regain that, that whole freedom that I seem to have come into the league with. Uh, it's amazing, but from the three championships that I've won to the, the death of my father, I've uh, evolved to be a better basketball player, and I've uh, evolved to be a better man and a better person. I thought, you know, when I first started to play this game, it's just a game. I hope I can play it forever. But yeah, it has evolved to be more than just a game. It's been a, a teacher of, uh, of, of life. I'm reminiscing about my whole career. And I thought about where I came from and where, I, where I'm ending up. Uh, it was overwhelming, you know, uh, that a snotty nosed kid from Wilmington, North Carolina, who never really thought he could make it to a Division I school, has ended up in the, in, in the world's most famous league at the highest apex of his career. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I can't wait to see what happens. You know, I think that's a part of the adventure. Emerald 9, Mark. Sir, it's going to be 1794. I like kidding around. I like joking around. But being that's you, I take the money, I give you the money back. <laughs> All right, so it's our first transaction. We're going to take a, a loss. <laughs> Retired. 